Greetings and welcome to my channel. Today I was hoping to talk about a little bit more serious topic than usual. You see, I was working on a little side project inspired mostly by a YouTube user CDK007, but also by other great users with similar ideas. Sadly he is not active lately, but maybe this video will help those who are still waiting for more. Some of his videos were about programs that simulated evolution in action, and while they were very simple to understand visually, I thought some uh, things could use a little bit of improvement. Seeing as I know how to code a little bit, I decided to do it myself, since experiment is the best form of confirmation, isn't it? But first, I will let CDK007 explain the basic principles of evolution. Now, the program that I've made works similarly to the one shown in his video, but has more parameters. There is a finite environment, there are carnivorous predators and herbivores which live in it. We can change almost everything from the population sizes and environment constraints to how do our specimen mate, namely how much partners do they have and how much offsprings they produce, as well as how much creatures need to be killed uh, by a single predator for him to survive. Some of these numbers might look suspicious, such as the number of herbivores a single predator has to kill to survive, but remember that we might be talking about a communal group hunting together for larger prey, such as a pack of wolves or a lion pride, so in total the number will be much higher. Besides, I will show you that the number can be changed later. Right now we are watching the simulation uh, run with the standard parameters. You can see the populations changing, and you can see the graphics in the top right corner with uh, blue representing the population of herbivores or prey, and with red uh, representing the, uh, the population of predators or carnivores. But let's try to run the simulation with different parameters. For example, we can make it so the environment can hold more herbivores, therefore increasing population in theory. Let's check this out. As you can see, we have just changed the maximum environmental capacity and now we can observe how the population grows uh, to use the most out of it. Right now we can already see them changing or rather evolving and while they're doing that, let me explain the main principle of this program. What forces the specimen to change? The idea is that there is just one variable that is coded in our theoretical organism's DNA and that is their color. Well, herbivores don't really need to change it by themselves. The predators would have a better change if their color is similar to that of their prey. You can think of it either as a disguise, a wolf in sheep's clothing if you will, and the examples of that behavior exist in insects and arach uh, arachnids, or you can think of it as herbivores migrating to the environment that hides them and the carnivores need to adapt and use it to their advantage too. 
Now, this creates a situation where the predators are trying to catch up to their prey and to have the same color as they do, while the herbivores are trying to do the opposite. Of course, none of them actually try to do this, it's just that the natural selection leaves those who are better adapted. But enough of that. Let's play with some of the parameters that I've mentioned before. You can see that I've changed the initial colors, and remember the parameter I've mentioned? The amount of preys one predator needs to kill to survive? We've changed that too. And if you look closely at the graph, you will see that this, in combination with the initial colors, changed to the most unfortunate for the predators, uh, resulted in a sharp decline at the very start, which resulted in only those who were adapted better as a result of random mutations in the initial population, surviving and reproducing, and then the population stabilized. Let's try something else. Let's decrease the population to only a fraction of what it was, and see if the evolution still works. And as you can see, it still does. But can we go even lower? Now this is what I'm talking about. We have only 100 preys and less than 100 predators. And the simulation still works. It's not clearly seen because uh, the population size is so small, but if you look closely, you can see it. Now let's change some other parameters. For example, let's set the mutation rate to only 0.1, which would mean that every tenth specimen in our population would uh, have a random mutation. And let's also set the random death rate to 0.1, which means that only 1 in 10 would die of natural causes, not of predators, not of hunger, but of other causes just being plain unlucky and not leaving any offsprings. As you can see, the rate of mutations is so high that our populations resemble random white noise more than any actual color. That is to be expected. But what if we go the other way around? Let's set the random death rate to 0.5 and the random mutation rate to only 1 in a 10,000. At first it seemed that the mutations don't happen really, but look closely. The predator group actually changed its color, even with such a low mutation rate as only 1 in a 10,000. The evolution still happens. You can clearly see the results of this on the graph. But what's that? Is this stagnation? The uh, prey is, on, is mostly white, while the predators are mostly black. You can barely see any mutants in their populations whatsoever. And the graph represents it. It's in some sort of a stagnation phase. Will this change? Now, let's see. At this point, any random mutations in the prey population do not stick, because they are close to perfect. The predators can only catch those that are plain unlucky. and. Uh, that's why the predator population is so low comp in comparison to the prey population right now. This phase continues for nearly two and a half hundred generations. But look, the predator population is evolving again. It is slightly brighter, which is to be expected since our mutations are not completely random. Uh, the genetics of the parents still do matter, but you can see the sharp decline in the prey population on the graph. And another change in coming, the predator population becomes a little bit brighter again, and this results in another decline. So, as you can see, the evolution happens even with such parameters. But look at this! At this point, something that even I haven't anticipated happened, as you can see, the predator population is grey and almost monotone, at least it was at, at the point that I started this. But the prey population, on the other hand, looks more like white noise. And why is that, one might ask? Well, the explanation is quite simple. You see, when the predators are grey, every step you take from being pure white or pure black gets you closer to grey. 
which is not something that makes you more adapted. In fact, it makes you less adapted. And so that is why the prey population consists now entirely of purely whites and purely blacks. And this situation continues with every slight imbalance in whichever side resulting in another evolutionary change. Finally, let's see one last thing. What if predators don't actually hunt this prey, or rather don't hunt at all since we don't really have any other prey in this simulation? What would happen then? Let's change the parameters so that the predator population doesn't die outright, but doesn't overpopulate either. You can see the results of this right now. The predator population is mostly stagnant, but there's a lot of noise. That's because nothing governs the mutations and they are basically out of control. And the prey population flickers. That's because it keeps reaching the maximum environmental potential and basically verges on the brink of starvation all the time. That is something to be expected as well. Which is good, because the theory of evolution is all about its predictive power. Now, I'm still working on this program, but if you want to, I can provide the sources and the executable file as well, right now. And, well, that's it. That was basically the video that I wanted to make. If you liked it, good. Rate it, and you might even want to subscribe to my channel. I'll try to post maybe some other videos on this topic or maybe other topics later. Thanks for watching.